What's going on everyone? So today I do not have any fancy graphics for you all made, but I will be going through what I view as some of the best budget decks that you could be building for under $50. Now, a lot of you have requested this and I've gone ahead through a lot of the previous decks that I've built and looked at which decks could really transition into being a budget friendly option without losing too much, right? If you consider something like the best deck or what a lot of people view as the best deck in the game right now, Boba Green, and if you look at that and you look three copies of Darth Vader, three copies of Boba Fett, and now you're looking at, well, a multi hundred dollar, I mean, in that case, something like what, three, four hundred dollar price tag for a deck, which is kind of crazy just between like those six cards. And so uh, we don't want to be ending up in that position. So these are all fifty dollars or under, at least as far as I'm looking at TCG player from when i recorded this and that means that you should be able to build these and have relatively solid success with all of them of course i'll be going through the lists that are budget as well as the lists that are not budget so that if you want to make any upgrades you can without further ado let's dive into it so starting off here my most popular video on the channel the leia red now this is a very very aggressive list and very powerful it gets very explosive using leia's actions cheating actions with her action ability and of course her backside as well this just plays really nicely statted units such as battlefield marine and sabine red getting in for a lot of damage and honestly most of the cards here are very very cheap as we go through you'll see a lot of the same units right you'll, you're really not seeing anything different there is one critical card that we are not using and the sideboard is a little bit weaker because we are not able to pick up some of the more expensive sideboard options. But for the main deck purposes, this is essentially the same exact deck without one card. As you can see, we are still running K2SO, the most expensive card in this deck. Um, I did decide to go ahead and splurge when we're considering the budget list here on K2SO because he's a major component as to how we're able to win a lot of games. The extra three damage is extremely important, so he is worth it. But as I said, the list can come out to about 50 bucks if you are uh, willing to go ahead and pick up K2SO. If you don't want to pick up K2SO, you're removing about $30 off the price and you can run another four drop, basically any four drop um, in, in the game or even heck more wedge and Tillies, which are a dollar. So you shave off a ton of a ton of the costs if you don't go with K2SO. But again, same sort of idea where you're just playing out on curve and you're just able to cheat actions with leia and get in a ton of damage the one card we are not running is red three red three is about the same price as k2so right now instead we're running a couple of consortium star vipers and bright hope consortium star viper ironically can actually be better if you're in the right matchup but it is not a rebel um and so you really need to be in an aggressive matchup for this to be performing nearly as good as red three as for the sideboard one of the big things that we are missing out on is Ewing reinforcements, and the other one is Admiral Akbar. Uh, instead, we are running Spec Force Soldier and Fighters for Freedom. Fighters for Freedom is a way we get in that reach against the more controlling decks. Instead of having Ewing to compete at the later stages of the game, we just want to get in some additional damage. Also, Ewing's very, very good against the Boba Magia because you can go ahead and rebuild from their insane Boba turn and actually swing it back in your favor. We also have three uh, copies of Spec Force Soldier. Again, this is for those situations where you're in a more uh, controlling mid rangey matchup and you just need to get through the Sentinels and you don't have the explosive firepower of things like Admiral Akbar or something like Ewing Reinforcement. So if you want to upgrade this list, this is what it's going to look like. I'll put a link to both the budget and non-budget lists down below. But essentially you are instead of playing your consortium star vipers in the last copy of bright hope you got red three in the main deck so pretty much the same and as for the sideboard we now have three copies of wolf three copies of admiral akbar and three copies of ewing reinforcement all of which are extremely powerful ewing has gone up in price quite a bit it is now eight dollars instead of the original when i bought these like two dollars so i actually have quite a few of these um and uh, i guess it's a good investment on my part but very very popular card and uh really powerful you could even run these in the main deck and i've experimented depending on your meta uh ewing reinforcements very good so you could even take out things like a couple copies of zeb or gorilla attack pod and run ewing reinforcement because it's just that powerful admiral akbar especially helps in the um more you know mid-rangey style where you actually have a couple units in the battlefield you can trade and this card's actually gone up in price quite a bit as well but that's going to be the regular as well as the budget list let's move on to our second 
list here for our second list we have another aggressive deck and you'll probably see a theme here because if you want to play a more controlling slower mid-rangey style of deck it's going to be more expensive because a lot of the ways you get back in the game and controlling the game is through the more expensive cards which is why they're more expensive but we do have a mid-range deck to finish us off here but as for this one this says for 54 cards but it's actually just not right if you look if you add these up it's just a straight 50. um so i don't know why it says 54 but you know it does i guess uh as for what we got going on this is a very similar list to the non-budget list honestly the only thing that's different is the sideboard this is exactly the same list um that i've gone over it was my second most popular video on the channel which you all love so if you're looking for a budget friendly list this is extremely powerful you get to leverage the or action ability by reading up units and just getting in for tons of damage this performs extremely well against the opposing aggro deck so if you are running against something like leia red or sabine green you actually have a pretty good game against them because you just get to haste out all of your units or uh, for those that are not familiar with magic terms haste just means you get to attack immediately when you deploy a unit using the action ability and in terms of main deck you are not missing anything count duke who's actually relatively cheap so is emperor palpatine the most expensive card in the deck is force lightning and uh, that is mainly really good against k2so so if you are going to remove force lightning because this is a 12 dollar card we have two copies of it you will reduce the price by a drastic amount however you will lose a lot of game against the aggro decks because it's one way again you could deal with k2so and take zero damage which is extremely important everything else is pretty easy commons and uncommons for the most part and uh, just solid units backing up the or uh, getting backed up with the grand inquisitor action ability all you want to do is play out your units action them out haste them up and attack in and you have a nice little force package with fallen lightsaber and the events that we're running with grand inquisitor as our leader as well as fifth brother uh seventh sister and well count dooku and emperor palpatine if that comes into play keep in mind a little trick with this deck if you are playing force throw you can target yourself for guaranteed additional damage so something pretty cool there as for the upgraded list as you can see it's literally just the same thing with the exception of the sideboard instead of running one copy of count dooku and emperor palpatine as more top end ways to compete in the later portions of the game if you do end up in your situation like that and we actually have two copies of avenger there are some situations where you're in the mid-range or controlling matchup where um, they may get to the later portions of the game and if you drop an avenger you actually just have a way to win the game uh, on its own for the most part it is extremely powerful but it's also 25 dollars each so um nothing that you necessarily need as this is something to come into play every once in a while because you could also just go in and beat them with your normal game plan but if you're in a more mid-range or controlling matchup the avengers do come into play in some cases so pretty simple but again very very nice budget list already really very minimal changes and lastly we have a mid-range deck for you all it is the luke green list that i put out except on a budget friendly option and realistically for all these decks there's like one or two cards that are driving up the price for aggro decks it's like k2so red threes four of causes those are the more expensive ones for your mid-range decks you know you're gonna have things like boa fett um darth vader luke skywalker those types of cards uh for more controlling decks it's gonna be like devastator avenger that type of stuff darth vader for this one it was definitely luke skywalker so i took out the two copies of luke in the main deck it says 56 cards in the main deck but that is just not true again if you add it up 24 plus 10 is 34 um plus 11 is uh 45 plus 5 is 50 so not sure why it says 56 cards but um you know maybe that's just a bug going on as for what we put in instead of luke well the way luke functions in this deck is it's more of a way to either accelerate your game plan to the point where they cannot return from as you're just playing extremely powerful mid-range threats in something like luke or it's a way to return from a place of no return right get a removal spell get a restore three at six seven on the battlefield as such we have one other copy of yoda and another copy of redemption in the main deck yoda gives us a little bit more game in the early game to kind of either benefit from the force package the little bit of a force package that we have in the deck or just be a nice 2-4 body that has restore to so they kind of get to um or have to rather focus this down and otherwise you're just out racing them uh, uh, oftentimes and then the other copy of redemption is a nice way to bring the game back from certain defeats as you play this it becomes a 6-1 and you use a heal 8 really really nice one and we also even had one additional one in the main uh, sideboard and now we have three between the main and side 
that is the other option or the other thing that's changed is the sideboard has changed quite a bit instead of running the other copy of luke in the sideboard as well as um some other options we are running make an opening as well as the other copy of redemption make an opening is a nice way to again get some of the earlier units out of the way and give us a little bit of breathing room especially against the boba decks which can be a little bit annoying if you want to power this deck up as I mentioned, Luke Skywalker is the name of the game. Um, I also had another copy of Ewing Reinforcement. This is another expensive card, as we've talked about before. But again, this deck is under $50 with the two Ewings in main board. And so the way you upgrade this is putting in two Lukes and one more Luke in the side and one more Ewing in the side. Luke Skywalker is up to $45, I believe, at this point. Um, very, very expensive, but definitely way worth it. Uh, this guy comes down as a removal spell for basically anything. Kills off even things like Fest Fire Spray, oftentimes, as you will be able to get a unit, a friendly unit, defeated. You could trade in with your own units and such. But also, with Alliance Dispatcher, this comes down earlier. So definitely very powerful in a way to power up the deck. But it will perform pretty nicely for you without those cards. So... That kind of wraps up the budget list. I know I didn't go super in depth about each of these lists and that's mainly because, well, I have videos on all three of these decks before. Uh, I just wanted to talk about some of the, the options for budget decisions since a lot of people were asking, hey, like if I don't have Darth Vader's or I don't have Luke's or I don't have Boba Fett's or I don't have this, that and the other thing, what can I do? And to be fair, like those are ridiculously priced cards right now. K2 and Red 3s, yeah, they're they're on the more expensive end, but at least they're not like 40, 50, 80 dollars, which I mean, even myself, I own zero Lukes and zero Darth Vaders and zero Boba Fett's in paper. That's because whenever I've gotten them, I've traded them for other decks so that I can play with more cards. Uh, <laughs> and if I want to play with my Lukes, my Darth Vaders and my Boba Fett's, I just go to Tabletop Simulator as well. Yeah. Uh, Maybe if you all want to, you should do that as well because it is a nightmare getting your hands on those cards and also, uh, well, feeling like you're playing with an $80 card. I don't know. It, it gets me a little scary, uh, scared sometimes because I don't want to ruin it. So if you're interested in more in-depth advice, in-depth breakdowns of any of these decks, I will leave a link to, well, all six of these lists down below as well as the three videos in which I go over all three of the main lists and well you can understand where I'm coming from for each of the cards in the list and why they are in there and how you want to play it when you don't have options for those cards with the budget list hopefully this was all, uh, helpful for you all I know that I've got a bunch of requests for the budget list and well well no one wants to, to play a weaker deck. Sometimes it's definitely worth it to not have to spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on random cards that might get cheaper with the future sets. And that's what I'm hoping for. I'm waiting for the next set for when my Darth Vader's drop down to like $35 and then maybe I'll consider picking them up or I'll just go back to my drafts on Wednesday night and pick them up there. Hopefully you can get some in your drafts. Thanks for watching everyone. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below and I'll see you all for the next one.